Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we're going to be reading two more pieces from Albert Einstein, Ideas and Opinions. First piece we're going to read is called National Security and the little blurb reads contribution to Miss Eleanor Roosevelt's television program concerning the implications of the H-bomb. February the 13th, 1950. I am grateful to you, Miss Roosevelt, for the opportunity to express my conviction in this most important political question. The idea of achieving security through national armaments is at the present at the present state of military technique a disastrous illusion. On the part of the USA, this illusion has been particularly fostered by the fact that the country succeeded first in producing an atomic bomb. The belief seemed to prevail that in the end it would be possible to achieve decisive military superiority. And in this way, any, any potential opponent would be, be intimidated, and security so ardently desired by all of us brought to us and all of humanity. The maxim which we have been following during these last five years has been, in short, security through superior military power, whatever the cost. This mechanic, technical, military, psychological attitude has had its inevitable consequences. Every single act in foreign policy is governed exclusively by one viewpoint. How do we have to act in order to achieve utmost superiority over the opponent in case of war? Establishing military bases as all possible strategically important points on the globe. Arming and economic strength of potential allies. Within the country, concentration of tremendous financial power in the hands of the military, militarization of the youth, close supervision of the loyalty of the citizens, in particularly of the civil servants, by police force growing more conspicuous every day, intimidation of people of independent political thinking, subtle indoctrination of the public by radio, press, and schools, growing restriction of the range of public information under the pressure of military secrecy. The, the armament race between the USA and the USSR originally supposed to be a preventive measure assumes the historical hysterical character. On both sides, the means of mass destruction are perfected with feverish haste behind the respective walls of secrecy. The hydrogen bomb appears to the public horizon as a probably attainable goal. Its accelerated development has been solemnly proclaimed by the president. It is successful radioactive poisoning of the atmosphere and hence annihilation of any life on Earth has been brought within the range of technical possibilities. The ghost-like character of this development lies in its apparently compulsory trend. Every step appears as the unavoidable consequence of the preceding one. 
in the end, there beckons more and more clearly general annihilation. Is there any way out of this impasse created by man himself? All of us, the partic and particularly those who are responsible for the attitude of the USA and USSR, should realize that we may have vanquished an external enemy, but we have been incapable of getting rid of the mentality created by the war. It is impossible to achieve peace as long as every single action is taken with a possible future conflict in view. The leading point of view of all political action should therefore be what can we do to bring out bring about a peaceful coexistence and even loyal cooperation of the nations the first problem is to do away with mutual fear and distrust solemn enunciation of, of violence not only with respect to means of mass destruction is undoubtedly necessary. Such renunciation, however, can be effective only if the, at the same time a supranational judicial and executive body is set up empowered to decide questions of immediate concern to the security of the nation. Even a declaration of the nations to collaborate loyally in the realization of such a restricted world government would considerably reduce the imminent danger of war. And in the vast analysis, every kind of peaceful cooperation among men and primarily based on mutual trust not only secondary, secondly on institutions such as courts of justice and police. This holds for nations as well as for individuals. And the basis of trust it is loyal give and take. What about international control? Well, it may be of secondary use, they play police measure. But it may be wise not to overestimate its importance. The times of prohibition come to my mind and give one pause. So yeah, again, Einstein saying we need to do something to bring about world peace between the nations. This next piece is called The Pursuit of Peace, and a UN radio interview on June the 16th, 1950, recorded in the study of Einstein's Princeton, New Jersey home. Question, is it an exaggeration to say that the fate of the world is hanging in the balance? Answer, no exaggeration. The fate of humanity is always in the balance, but more truly now than at any known time. Question? How can we awaken all the people of the seriousness of the moment? Answer? I believe this can be answered. A remedy can be found in preparing for the event of war, but in starting from the conviction that the security from military disaster can be realized only by patient negotiation and through creation of legal basis for the solution of international problems supported by a sufficiently strong executive agency. In short, a kind of world government. Question. 
in the current atomic armaments race leading to another world war, are some people, or as some people maintain, a way of to prevent war? Answer. Competitive armament is not a way to prevent war. Every step in this direction brings us near to catastrophe. The armaments race is the most is the worst method to prevent open conflict. On the contrary, real peace cannot be reached without systematic dis disarmament on a supranational scale. I repeat, armament is no protection against war, but leads inevitably to war. Question. Is it possible to prepare for war and a world community at the same time? Answer. So, striving for peace and preparing for war are incompatible with each other and in our time more so than ever. Question. Can we prevent war? Answer. There is a very simple answer. If we have the courage to decide ourselves for, for, for peace, we will, will have peace. Question, how? Answer, by the firm will to reach agreement. This is axiomatic. We are not engaged in a play, but in a condition of utmost danger to existence. If you are not firmly decided to resolve things in a peaceful way, you will, you will never come to, to a peaceful solution. Question. What is your estimate of future effect of atomic energy from our civilization on, on our civilization in the next 10 or 20 years answer not relevant now the technical possibilities we now have already are satisfactory enough if the right use would be made of them question what is your opinion of the profound changes in our living predicted by some scientists? For example, the possibility of our need to work only two hours a day. Answer. We are always the same people. There are not really profound changes. It is not as important if we work five hours or two. Our problem is social and economic at, at the international level. Question, what would you suggest doing with the present supply of atom bombs already stockpiled? Answer, give it to a supranational organization. During the interval before solid peace, one must have some protecting power. One-sided disarmament is not possible. This is out of the question. Arms must be entrusted only to an international authority. There is no other possibility. Systemic disarmament connected with supranational government. One must not look too technically on the problem of security. The will to peace and the readiness to accept every step needed for this go are more important. Question. What can a private individual do about war or peace? Answer. Individuals can cause anyone who tries to be elected for Congress, etc., to give clear promise to work 
for international order and restriction of national sovereignty in favor of that order. Everybody is involved in forming public opinion, and he must really understand what is needed, and he must have the courage to speak out. Question. United Nations Radio is broadcasting to all of the corners of the earth in 27 languages. Since this is a moment of great danger, what would you have us broadcast to the peoples of the world? Answer, taken on the whole, I would believe that Gandhi's voice, or Gandhi's views, were the most enlightened of all the political men of our time. We should strive to do things in his spirit not to use violence in fighting for our cause, but by non-participation in what we believe is evil. So yeah, Einstein once again pushing for a international government bigger than just single nations. Uh, wanting disarmament on both sides because he understands one side disarming is not a solution. But you cannot keep building your stockpiles to intimidate the other. This was a very big portion of uh, the Cold War mutually assured destruction. You may destroy us, but we've got enough to destroy you. But yeah. But that'll be it for this episode. As always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, later.